if you read the Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you. Good evening, Warrior Branches. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Sunday evening service, and we'll have followed by communion. So get your emblems ready, and uh, anybody who has the Holy Spirit in them, who has accepted Jesus in their heart, can partake with us. And um, it's just a really exciting time when you have communion with the church because uh, you're you're remembering what Jesus did for us, for us. Amen? Amen. So, um, tonight's service, uh, we're going to be talking about the, um, the Lord's been really placing on my heart, the backslidden. And, um, I was dreaming. I was just having a regular dream and, uh, I was drinking something out of a coffee cup it was dark. I think it was coffee or tea. And um, at the bottom of the glass, there was a hidden message for me. And it, it read, backslidden. And uh, the Lord was like, backslidden. And I was like, okay, Lord. Okay, Lord, show me. Show me. You know? And he did. He showed me. So, um, anyhow just going to open up prayer. Jesus, 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 I need you, Lord. I need you more than ever right now, Lord God. I need you to make this more real for me than you have ever made anything real for me before, Lord God. You show me your heart on so many matters, Lord God, and I need you to show me your heart. I need to feel the pain. I need to feel the sorrow. I need to feel everything, Lord God. Just bring it all back to me, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, that your message goes forth, Lord Jesus. I pray the fire of God just come over me right now, Lord God, and it's just be all your words, all your words and none of mine, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that you've just pushed this hindrance, this sickness away, Lord God, for your word to come forth, Lord, in Jesus' name. I praise you, Father. I love you so much, Lord God. I need all of you, Lord God, and none of me. None of me, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Make it real, Father. Make it real for me, Father. Give me your heart on this matter, Lord, in Jesus' name. It's the only way, the only way it could go out, Father, and I know that. I know that. So whatever the cost is for me, Lord God, you just use me, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. So with the, the backslidden, um, it, it reminds me of the... The, the good shepherd and going after um, that one sheep, leaving the 99 to go after the one. So in this, in this message, we're going to be talking to the 99 and then we're going to be talking to the one. And so um, now as, as the back slid in and me just talking to the Lord about it, he showed me a courtroom. And I, and I was observing this courtroom, and there was, um, I'm not a lawyer, so bear with me here, but you have where the judge sits, you have where uh, the defendant sits, right, in the box, right next to the judge, and, and they um, get questioned, I guess we'll just say questioned, and then you have the jury, on the side and then you have like your lawyer 
<laughs> your lawyer, a lawyer, or and then you have like the cross examiner, which would be, um, I guess the other the other side, right? I'm trying to think of that movie, Liar Liar. Um, but anyway, so, um, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. So, anyhow, the backslidden. Um, are sitting in the defendant box and, and they're getting questioned and they're, they're getting um, ridiculed and accused and, um, and I just, I, I see these faces, these angry faces pointing fingers at them saying, you did this, you did that, and this and that, and, 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 and the cross-examiner is just looking at them and just like making them feel as if they did do all that, because that's their job. That's their job, is to make them believe that they did. So, anyhow, the Lord was showing me that as 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 the backslidden is is um is leading a life without the Lord. And God is calling all the backslidden slidden back to him right now. Right now. Because time is getting short. And he sees you. He sees you. And he sees the fingers that are getting pointed at you and accusing you and making you feel worthless, defeated. He sees that. He sees all that. And he knows that you think he's the judge sitting right next to you. And he's here to tell you he's not the judge in that courtroom. He's not. All the characters in that courtroom that you are sitting in, feeling guilty, are all part of Satan's kingdom. All of them. But the backslidden feel like God is the judge and he's listening to all these accusations on them and that God's going to judge. Not in this scenario. He's not. Satan is sitting in that judge seat. Satan is the juror. Satan is the cross-examiner. Satan is the one pointing the finger at you. Those are all lies from the enemy. And I've sat in that seat before. I've sat in that seat before and I thought God was the judge. And I thought God was listening to all these bad things that I've done. All these horrible, horrible things. And that he was shaking his head at me. And that he was so disappointed in me. That is an imposter sitting in that judge seat, personating Jesus, because that is not Jesus. Do you know where Jesus is in that courtroom? Jesus is sitting right next to you in that defendant box. That's where Jesus is in that courtroom. They're persecuting you. They're also persecuting him because he lives in you. A backslidden person is a sheep. A backslidden person is someone who already accepted Jesus in their heart. The seed is planted, may not have sprouted yet, or may have. Everybody is in a different place in their walk. But a backslidden person is the one being accused 
by the deceiver, Satan, who pleads guilty to try to live a life without guilt. I'm going to repeat. The backslider is the one being accused by the deceiver, Satan, who pleads guilty to live a life without guilt. So the cross-examiner, Satan, also, all of the characters are Satan. You're in a courtroom full of Satan, it's lies, all of his lies, using every character in that courtroom. The cross-examiner, Satan, looks at this, this and that, and they say they've done it. They did all of this, throw them away. Because that's his job. That's what Satan wants to do, is to throw us in the lake of fire, bring us to hell. He wants your soul. And he'll do anything that he can, anything he can, for you to believe all of his lies to get you there. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus isn't the judge. Jesus is sitting in that box with you, crying with you, holding your hand, feeling your pain. But not only that, he's sitting in that car with you, he's sitting on that park bench with you, he's sitting in that jail cell with you. He sees you. He sees every tear that falls from your face in regret. He sees it all and he wants to take it all away. He wants to take it all away from you. So this is to you. And this is what the Lord has to say. March 4th, 22. It is critical times right now, my children. Fear not, for I am with you. I'm calling on all backslidden to come to me now. Right now. Lean on me in my ways. Let loose of the world and its ways. Come deep into my love. You will be safe there. I love you. I see the pain the deceiver has charged you. I have not charged you. I took all the charging off of you and put it on me. So you can live freely with my spirit in you. You can do all things. I have overcome for you to be overcomers. Come to me now, my children. Report to me. But Jesus, the Messiah, he sees you. He sees you right where you're at. And he, he's not charging you. He's not charging you. It's Satan that is charging you. And you feel charged and you feel guilty, and you feel shameful, and you feel regret, remorse, all those things. You feel abandoned, neglected, rejected. He sees you, and he's calling you back. He's not angry with you at all. He's angry with Satan. 
He's furious with Satan. Because Satan is lying to his children. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and read the parable of the wandering sheep. And who better to read this other than someone such as myself who was a wandering sheep. I was saved as a little girl, church camp, youth group, and I rebelled and I did a lot of bad things. I've, I've been in handcuffs. I've been in courtrooms. I've been in all these things. Here went off. And I see you. God has set a plan and he is going after his one sheep. Here we go. Matthew 18, 1810. See what you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of thy father in heaven. Verse 12. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in Heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. He goes after that one and he is so excited to bring him back. That lost sheep, that backslidden. He's married to the backslidden. And for the rest of the 99, 99 sheep to get the one leaving the 99 with the Holy Spirit as the babysitter, Jesus is married to the backslider. You see, we are his sheep. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. When he leaves us to go get that one, the Holy Spirit is our babysitter. He's leaving us in good hands with the Holy Spirit to go get that one. Because in the Bible it says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And how's that? Because we have the Holy Spirit living in us and through us. So for the 99 who wonder, well, where's he going if he's going to go get the one and leave us all behind? He's not leaving us and he never will leave us nor forsake us. The Holy Spirit is babysitting us while he goes out to get that one, while he went out to go get me, while he went out to go get you while he is going out to get the backslidden right now. He is calling them all home. Because there's no safer place to be right now, but to be with Jesus. 
he's calling all the backslidden home, back with him. Um, when I was younger, I, uh, I was, uh, I was in my twenties. I didn't move out yet, but, um, no, I was like 19. I didn't move out yet. And, um, I, uh, I got in a fight with my mom and it was like a teenager rage and, um, I hurt her. I, uh, I, I hurt her bad. I, um, I like retaliated in an awful way. Like, like a, a demons were tormenting me and, um, I was going through a really hard time. Um, and this was after Jackie and, and, and she, you know, hung herself. And, um, so I was going through this like tailspin and my mom was trying to do everything she can to help me. And I was stealing. I was treating my family awful. I was, um, drinking, getting high, doing whatever I could to, to, um, numb things. And so anyways, I got in a really big bad fight with my mom. And, and my mom had to do what she had to do. She had to call the cops on me and get me escorted out of the house. And so the cops came and they saw that I was just a little girl and they, they somewhat took pity on me. They, they said, ma'am or miss, you know, you, you have to leave the premises. You have to, you know, pack a bag and, and leave. Your, your parents are telling you to leave and you're 19, you know, so you got to go. Um, so, uh, I did, I grabbed my school bag and I grabbed my purse and I sat in my car. They didn't make me like leave the court or anything, but I sat in my car and I cried. I cried because I felt like I had nowhere to go. I just hurt the one person who cared about me. And I sat there and I cried and I, and I was just like, where do I even go? I believe I like went to a friend's house or something. But anyways, fast forward, uh, when I was, um, 27 and the Lord got his grip on me and called me back because I was a backslidden sheep. He called me back and uh, I, I went through healing. I had to go through a lot of inner healing for all the things that I did in my life. And I had to go through deliverance. And during that healing and just praying with people, that all it, that's all it took. It's not like I went and took a class or anything. All it took was just praying with people with spiritual gifts. So Jesus can show me how, how to heal these things right. Because I was slapping on all those band-aids, trying to just heal myself and not, not, um, have to, uh, deal with it, <clears throat> you know, because, because I, I was, I was a backslidden. I, I, I pleaded guilty and I said, whatever, I'll still do what I want. I plead guilty. Yeah, I did it, but I still going to do whatever I want. Like that was my way of thinking. And, and if I pleaded guilty, then the court was over. Everything was done. I got my sentence and I still was able to do what I wanted to do. And that's what God is saying. Like the deceiver, he, the a backslider is the one being accused by the deceiver who pleads guilty so they could keep doing what they want to do and, and, and trying to live a life without guilt. How's that working out for you? Didn't work out for me either. 
it kept me in a tail spin. And I kept chasing my tail going nowhere, but in a circle. I never able, was able to go over here, and I never was able to go over there. I sat in one spot, spinning around, chasing my tail in a tailspin. So when I was 27 um, and in my healing, I was praying with my good friend Beth and, um, and the Lord showed me that day when my mom had to call the cops on me. And that was something I did not want to visit because that was shameful, shameful. My mom is like my best friend now, but that was a shameful thing. And I didn't want to revisit the, that pain and those feelings. I didn't want to revisit it. But God wanted to heal it up the right way. He showed me when I was sitting in that car crying, he was sitting right next to me. He was sitting right next to me crying also, saying, my child, you shouldn't have to go through this. You don't need to go through this. And I'm here to sit here and tell you right now, you don't need to go through this either. God has a plan for you. And it's a lot, lot, lot better than what you're leading right now. Plans not to harm you and give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 39.11 sure a lot of people know this verse, but are all blurry. Sorry. 29.11. Sorry. Jeremiah 29.11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, Plans to give you hope and a future. That is a promise when you come back to the Lord. You've got to come back. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You see, you gave your life to Jesus and now you're backsliding and God started a good work in you already and he is going to carry it on to completion. He's not giving up on you and he's asking you not to give up on yourself. I sure wanted to. I did. Satan always whispered in my ear that I would hang myself one day because my best friend hung herself. And I lost my job. I lost my house, my rental. 
I um, was just down on all luck, it felt like. And, and I was sitting at a park in my car thinking, where can I go? Had nowhere I could think of. I've already exhausted everyone in my life that opened up their doors to help me. I don't want to exhaust anyone else. And the only thing that felt like I should do was to take my life. And I looked at that tree and I wanted to hang a rope on it. And I was crying, trying not to cry right now. <laughs> and the only thing that stopped me from hanging myself on that tree was thinking of Jesus and how he hung on a tree for me. And I was just like, Lord, if you hung on that tree for me, then take this away. Take this away now. And he did. My phone rang. And it was my mom. And she said, honey, come home. He said, mom, I'm about to hang myself. And she said, honey, come home. Thank you, Jesus. And that is what Jesus is saying to you right now. He's saying, child, come home. Let me take this from you. The accuser is a liar. And he's not sitting on that judge seat judging you. That is an imposter. So, whew, thank you, Jesus, for making this so real. Thank you for letting me feel it all again, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now for the 99. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go over some verses. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. <clears throat> no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will always provide a way out so that you can endure it. That was the phone call. My mom called me while I was staring at that tree in the park. And Satan was having his way with me. And God gave me a way out. First Kings 8.57 May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 2 Timothy 1, 7, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Deuteronomy 4, 31, for the Lord your God is a merciful God. 
He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. He has a covenant with you. He's married to the backslider. He's married to the church. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Genesis 28, 15, I am with you and you will watch over you wherever you go. He says, I'm with you. I was sitting in that car next to you. I was sitting right there in the other seat. I am sitting right there in the defendant box with you. I am sitting on that park bench with you. I am sitting right here in the jail cell with you. I am sitting right next to you and I am holding you up. Genesis 28 15 I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will bring you back he says. The Holy Spirit tugs on us tugs on us, our heartstrings, the umption of the Holy Spirit draws us back to the Lord. It's all the Holy Spirit. You're already a sheep. You're just wandering. And he is coming after you and calling you back. Genesis 28, 15. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Hebrews 4.16 Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, Satan loves to shred our confidence that we have in the Lord. And all those fingers pointing at you in that courtroom, he's shredding your confidence that you have in God. Because he doesn't want you to have confidence in your Father, your Heavenly Father. But God is telling you right here, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence that he is going to get you through this that he is going to draw you in more and more so that we may receive mercy God's mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need Hebrews 13 4 Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all sexual immoral. <laughs> Excuse me. Now that's when he's the judge. And that is for the 99. What makes it different? is when you get out of all of Satan's lies and you start living an upright life again and you start living for the Lord and walking with the Lord. He'll take all that away. But if you keep sinning and being adulterer and sexual and moral, living with boyfriends and girlfriends without being married, sexual morality. I've been there. I played wifey to many different men. 
I've been there. I thought that's the way you were supposed to do it. <laughs> but when you when he shows you the right way, then that is when you turn away from those ways and you do things his way. And his way for my life was my husband courting me before we got married. And that's what he's telling you right here, right here. We're, we're unpacking this prophecy. It is critical times right now, my children. Fear not, for I am with you. I'm calling on all backslidden to come to me now, right now. He says, lean on me and my ways. Let loose of the world in its ways. Let go of it. Let go of the ways of the world. And lean on him and his understanding and his ways of doing things. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He tells you over and over and over again in the Bible. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 6. So we may with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Amen. He who is in us is stronger and bigger than he who is in the world. Amen. Joshua 1 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then we'll go Micah 7, 7. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Amen. He hears you. He hears your prayers. He hears your heart. He hears your heart. And he is not charging you. It says it right here. The deceiver is charging you. And you're believing the lie. I see the pain the deceiver has charged you. I have not charged you. I took all the charging off of you and put it on me. So you can live freely with my spirit in you. You can do all things. He's overcome the world for you to be an overcomer. And Satan does not want you to know that. And I'm a witness sitting here today saying that I've been there and I believed all the lies that the enemy threw at me. And God delivered me. How did he do it? Through his word, his truth, through prayer, through on my knees crying out to him. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that I just made you proud, Lord. I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for going after this one sheep, Father. 
and leaving the 99 with the babysitter, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for watching the 99, Lord God, while Jesus came after me. And Jesus is coming after many right now. And we just pray that you just soften everybody's heart to hear this message, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, help us get right with you, Lord, in every way in our life, Lord God, right now. Right now. Because you're calling all of us, Father. You're calling all of them to you, Father. All of us to you, right now, Lord God, to report to you. And we report to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and do communion. And um, call me old-fashioned, but um, I've always done communion when it is um, led by a guy. And so uh, Richard and Anne have graciously uh, volunteered to help me with this part. Um, so... Here we go. gathered together at this moment, at this time, in this place, for Holy Communion. Communion 
first and foremost with the Lord, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As we sit down together at his table, we worship him. This is our act of worship because we are commanded by the Lord Jesus that every time we meet, we should take partake of the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah, yes. But also, as we've said in the past, this is a communion of believers, of fellowship. This is, this, mm -hmm. is, this is our intimate time together. We have intimate times whenever we gather, and the intimate time of worship, the spirit of worship, and we're all together mm -hmm. in one spirit. Again, communion is another one of those times when we gather together in one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one yes. church. And we celebrate what the Lord has He's done, done for us. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> so, God. with all that in mind, we are going to read the traditional verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul sets out how we should celebrate the communion. Now, I'm going to read this sort of backwards to front because when Paul gives the instructions for communion, he also follows it up with a warning of, of how not to take communion. And I think we should, we should be aware of this before we partake. So, for as often as you eat and, um, this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Again, we've spoken about that. Communion is a celebration of not only what Christ has done, but what he is about to do in, in his imminent return. His, the, that is our glorious hope, as we've said. Um, whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body of the blood mm. of the Lord. The Lord very much takes this seriously of how we do this. Yeah. If, you, if you drink it un, in an unworthy manner, if you have unconfessed sin, and you know you have unconfessed sin, and you have mm -hmm. not repented before the Lord, or if you're sitting on the fence, that's not to say that the communion table isn't open to everyone, but the communion represents a very holy thing, represents a holy person, and, and represents our relationship with the infinite, with, with, yes. the, with the... the, uh, the immortal God, so to speak. So, you don't have to be perfect. No one has to be perfect. But you have to do it with a willing and a believing heart that what you're doing is you are partaking of the Lord's bread, or the Lord's body and the Lord's blood. Because in this, like baptism, is a public confession of our faith. Amen. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment unto himself. Mm -hmm. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. So I don't know about you, but from those verses, those words from Paul, I, it seems to suggest to me that one of the things that the Lord will judge us is how, in what manner, we take his cup, we partake of his cup. We partake of his table. We become one with him in communion. So with that being said, we shall partake of Holy Communion with each other as commanded of the Lord. And in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, you're all familiar with these verses. For I received from the Lord... That I also deliver to you. He received it directly from the Lord. This isn't something that he practiced or he came up with. He said this was the instructions. Just as Moses was given the instructions on the mountain of how to build the tabernacle straight from heaven, so Paul was giving the instructions by the Lord Jesus of how we are to partake. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, thank you, O Lord, O King of the universe, who brings forth fruit of the earth. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, or is broken for you. I'm reading from the English Standard. So let us partake of the body of Christ and remembering the sacrifice for our souls.
In the same way, he also took a cup after supper. Now, Passover required four glasses of wine as part of the ceremony. This was the last. This was the last of the of the of the wine that was to be consumed after the supper. That's why this says, and he took the cup after the supper and saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We also remember what the Lord says, that this blood is the seal of the new covenant, that this covenant, God only not only makes a new covenant with everyone who believes, with all of mankind, not just with Israel, but he seals it with his own blood covenant or a legal document both then and now is not legal until it is sealed by wax in most cases but in this case he sealed it with his own precious blood let us partake of the blood of the lord we thank you O lord god for this wonderful table this wonderful opportunity that you give to each and every believer in you each each of the branches lord when we come together father we are reminded that we draw our strength from the vine we draw our strength from you lord god we thank you father that each time we take your we take the bread we are reminded of the awful price it took to redeem our souls from the darkness of sin lord god and when we drink of the of the wine lord we are reminded, Father, of the precious blood that was shed for us, the blood that not only redeems us, but it washes away all sin, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to worship you, Lord God, together. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to show you our love. And we thank you that you have shown your love. By this we know that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you, Lord, and I pray... A mighty blessing, Father, your peace and your blessing upon each and every person here tonight, Lord, who has partaken communion with us tonight, Lord God. May they be blessed and highly favored, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Back to you, Jules. Thanks, guys. So, there you have it. There you have our Sunday evening service, and um, I just thank the Lord that he just brought back every single feeling, pain that I felt to be able to um, identify with you guys on, um, on, on where you are and how you're feeling, and, and I just pray that um just don't ride the fence don't ride the fence you can't have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the other kingdom you gotta have both feet in to god's kingdom and he's calling you back and he's calling you back right now because time is short and and with him is the safest place for you for all of us amen all right, guys. Well, I will talk to you soon, and I hope you guys have a blessed evening, and I will see you in the morning. Bye. Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you 